Hey traders, Roggy here. And in this recap video, well, it was fun while it lasted. Let's talk about what's going on with the Euro. So we've had a number of what I call just kind of the lifespan of a trade videos throughout this week when I do these recaps. And we've talked about the Euro Yen. We talked about the Dow. Both of those were winners. I talked about how they set up, followed through and how we managed them. Well, this one's a winner too. It's a massive winner for me. But I want to talk about a question that I've received a lot of because I've been very vocal since the early part of this year about where I think the euro is going. Uh, I haven't changed my mind about that analysis, but that's just analysis. Those are opinions. Trades are cannot are not opinions. They've got to be a narrative that's supported by price and preferably technicals too. So what happened? Well, I've, I've talked to a number of people. It's interesting. I've had this discussion on the phone with, with friends and colleagues for the better part of today. And when I can pinpoint the trade started to go astray, the trend trade, right? The trend trade started to go astray was actually on September the 26th. Okay. And in this candle right there, that red crab candle was the first grab candle since we had gotten in that actually triggered the break of the trend. That was a huge day. And really what we're seeing now, fast forward about a month, pretty much a month on the spot, is yesterday's ECB candle breakdown on the 26th and today's follow through here on the 27th. But really everything started back here. That candle on the 26th broke the trend and put us into chop. Chop changes the type of strategy that we use. Up until then, I was you know, plenty happy to buy pullbacks and what I call roll up with the trade, I roll up with the trade. We get an entry, we take some profit, we get an entry, we take some profit, just roll up with the trade. Until, we can, until the trend stops and that strategy is no longer valid. And then we go to a strategy that emphasizes oversold buys along support, but we know they're no longer trending buys. They're oversold buys. Oversold buys meaning we've got a choppy market, we respect the trend that was, so we carry with it a bullish bias. And that's what we're looking at. So yesterday, when Mario Draghi not only changed the narrative, narrative and price went together. So what was the narrative shift? That we're going to continue taper, which is fine. We're going to extend the program, not so fine. And we have no insight into when we will complete the taper, not fine. And even when we're done, we are not hiking rates anytime soon. Definitely not fine. And then the Euro buyers ran for cover. Because there was no reason really to continue to hold the euro at levels like 118 when all we had was a taper. Don't know when it's going to end. Don't know when the program's going to end. We don't know how quickly it's going to end. And even once it ends, we have no idea when we're going to get hawkish. Because typically when a, when a central bank starts the tapering process, the assumption is once they're done, they're going to start to get more of a hawkish tone and eventually start that tightening cycle. That is what was completely derailed and, and very cleverly so by Mario Draghi. A strong euro does them no favors. They'd like to see some inflation, so the weak euro is not going to do them any favors either. But do I still project a 125? I do. But the thing is, how and when we're going to get there is going to require a completely different setup. When we're going to get here, don't know. When is it, you know, how we're going to get there? Don't know. So I've got to take a back seat to this thing. What I'm going to be looking for is perhaps a 480 minute organization. Maybe it's going to be another level of support that I can treat as an oversold buy on the daily. Again, we don't know. And when we don't know, what we do is say, okay, not sure what this market's going to do. So I retreat to the short, the 60 minute time frame or less. Heck, 60 to five minute. That's where I'm going to live for a little while. All right. Now, the, the catastrophic stop question that I was asked quite a bit was what? Rob, where will you go ahead and start to take profits of your 117s, your 111s, those types of entries? Where are you going to say, look, where are you going to take profit? Well, we've been taking profit all along. But where are you going to pull the plug on the remainder of those trades? And and 116, really that 117 
um, area was kind of the warning. 11650 became really sort of the warning track. And then, you know, we just got to stop at 116 even, which means that I took my 11135s off the table. My 117s and 118s were long gone by then because the break evens were hit, right? None of those trades, except for my most recent 117 buy, which was grand opening, grand closing. What do I mean by that? The same candle that got us in was the same candle that got us out. And that happens. That was a pretty tight stop. And then now I just realized that I'm waiting for this market to just kind of hit the reset button and give me my next fill. So that's where we are right now on the Euro US. I got a lot of questions about it. Uh, I'm not one to put, you know, show, you know, sweep these things under the rug. I don't think there's anything to sweep. This was a massively profitable trade for me and many members and many of you that have been following along, even from something as aggressive as 117 and 118, because we went and tested that 121 level. But please don't aggressively look for that next entry. Not yet. It's not there. We've got plenty of time to let this thing simmer down. Maybe by non-farm payroll next week, we might see something nearer term giving us an opportunity, but it's not now. All right. So again, it was fun while it lasted. I still think once 125 is possible, that means we still have maybe another really good trade that's going to form, but we've got to be patient. Just like I was patient back at the early part of the year, I've been waiting for this, this move to happen since really the end of 2015, right? Or not 2015, sorry, the end of 2016. And it took most of the first quarter for it to really start to organize until April, May showed that we started to get the more organized green grab candles, started taking out some of the early 2017 and late 2016 highs. And then we were off to the races and I'll be patient again. All right. So I wanted to bring you guys up to speed on what's been an epic trade, the why and the what, and you know, the when is what's still lingering out there. There will be another opportunity. And for that, I am very excited. And you, you, you bet I will talk about it here when we start seeing that form once again. Enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you soon.